Welcome to video three, blending techniques. Blending techniques with colored pencil are pretty easy. There are two main kinds. One is dry, one is wet. Let's talk about the dry side first, which would be this side of your worksheet. I'm gonna use the greens from my final project because I wanna play with them. I wanna see how they blend. There's gonna be three different blending techniques that we're gonna use on this side. Pay attention. When blending, always start with the lighter color. Darker colors will cover it up, but lighter colors won't cover up the darker colors. So I'm going to go here to this green, and I am going to start coloring in this shape. Now, you've seen this in the final project of mine. It's just a flat color, but if I then take a darker green and layer over it, kind of has this light to dark look, but I'm not using pressure, I'm using blending, or in this case, I'm layering the colors. Another thing you can do is use a colorless blender. It will bring the colors together without coloring over them. I'm going to color in this big space so you can kind of see that a little bit more. And when you're layering, you don't have to color in the whole space with the color you're not going to use if you know where you want it to layer. So if I wanted to come all the way up here, I can. It's not a big deal. Or I can leave it halfway like that. I'm still going to layer just like I showed you with the other green. You might notice that where I didn't color, where I left it halfway, it does show up darker and this blends a little bit more. So, just depends what you're going for. I'm going to bring this colorless blender in here though and all it does is it smooths that color out and makes the blend look more cohesive or more brought together. Almost got a tie-dye look with that. The last one on the dry technique is with a blending stick. This is a blending stick here. You want to find one that hasn't been used or if it has been used, talk to me and we'll talk about how to remove the paper so that it can be fresh for you. And then pick your colors. Alright, I'm going to go down here just so we can kind of see the difference. And when you're filling out this worksheet, you can try all the techniques. You can try one up to you. You don't even need to fill out the whole mandala. Just practice and get a taste for it. Now, something cool is you can even do more than one color. So I put that light green underneath, and then I'm doing this jade green here. And then just a little bit of the yellow green at the top. Then, using this, going to use it just like you would a pencil. Similar to the colorless blender, it blends it in. Notice you're kind of getting a green on the tip there. It just helps. So those are some dry layering techniques. What this does is it helps make things look more three-dimensional. It gives it a little bit more depth. And it's just kind of fun to see what happens. Like I said, I kind of got that tie-dye technique. Wasn't expecting it, but it was a happy accident. Okay, on this side, we are gonna talk about wet blending techniques. Now, there's many liquids you can use, but in this class, just for safety, we are gonna stick with baby oil. Yep, baby oil, just like you find in the kids section at Target or Walmart or wherever you shop and Q-tips that you find in the health and beauty section or the pharmacy section. Basic items, but they're gonna make a really big difference. On this side, I am gonna use the purples from my final. Same reason though, I want to see what happens. I'm gonna pick those three. 
Something that I didn't mention over here, but I'm going to mention here, is look at the colors next to each other. The wood color kind of gives you an idea of which one's lighter. So I laid them out here and realized I'm kind of wrong. I need to put this one out here because this is darker than that. All right. I'm going to look at this flower here. And I'm not going to color in all these spaces individually. I am going to just kind of almost create that tie-dye look by the back and forth stroke here. Layer that over top. Now, if you wanted to do a dry technique, you could stop here. But we're doing wet, so you're going to see a little bit of magic happen once I'm done coloring. Now, here I'm trying to stay in these triangles, so I gotta be careful. Okay. If you need help opening this, just ask, but you push down and turn, and then it's got just this little opening, so all you're gonna do is hold the Q-tip to that little opening, turn it upside down just to get a little bit on there, and kind of feel it. Not quite enough. Not even really squeezing. Now if you do squeeze, it's okay. But just a little bit of wetness. And you're going to gently apply. And that just brings that color in and it actually shows up on the Q-tip here. Almost like you created a watercolor without using paint. And it even fills in some of those spaces that you didn't have before. Great technique. Now you do need to be careful. As I pointed out, I wanted to stay within those triangles. And because this Q-tip size, I'm going outside of it. So you want to watch what you're doing. And you may choose not to use this technique in small spaces. But these are some really cool blending techniques that you might want to use on that final project. So go ahead and try to add some depth and apply your learning from this video.